The summer of 1913 passed and autumn set. The leaves blew from the trees in the cool autumn wind. Business has began to slow down at Phil's, so Jack had taken another job by the end of October. It was so draw to draw adverts for a very small local feedier. They had planned a large production of a nativity for Christmas and required an artist for the posters. Jack had applied and got the job almost straight away. Rose, of course, didn't know of this. She wouldn't want him to overwork himself. Besides, she didn't know what his talent had returned and that he had been drawing flutantly for a few months now. His reason for not telling her was a surprise for her 19th birthday. He had planned to draw the whole family, him, Rose, and Maggie all together and to frame it. He could almost imagine her face already. He knew that she loved it and know how it came to the heart. Megan was now crawling, and at nine months old, she was a little handful. Her hair grew more and more fiery every day, just like her mother's. Her big blue gorgeous eyes were more inquisitive than ever. She was into everything. She always wanted to see everything and to touch everything. By the time Jack was home from work, Rose was absolutely exhausted. Two days a week, Rose had returned to her job at a small sandwich job shop just a few blocks away from her home. It was nice to be able to bring home some money. Jack was still an amazing worker and supported his family very well. It's just like Rose liked to have her very own money sometimes. It wasn't barely a fraction of what Jack earned a week, but it was something that she could bring home on the table. Besides, it was nice to be able to have to rest from Maggie. It was certainly a fiery little thing. And Jean or Marie would take care of her while for two days and a week that she worked. It was nice to get back into the world of the adults after spending so long with the baby. By the middle of November, Rose's 19th birthday was nearing, the year before it had ended with the small affair, with Rose being heavily pregnant, just gotten small together at Phil's. This year they planned a party. Phil and had paint painted Happy 19th on the old sheets with colorful paint to use as a banner. Jack set out for a long table and wished they could dine on, on, but of course in the living room, and placed white tiles in the middle, which were Rose's favorite flowers. A local band had agreed to play some Irish folk music, just like it had been played while they were in Santa Monica after they had made their birthday meals. Anne had cooked roast beef, potatoes, and vegetables, and of course their large cake which Marie and Jean had baked together throughout that day. Phil and his family had agreed to come around later, after Jack had his meal alone with Rose, and they would took Maggie out for a few hours, so they could be completely alone. So this place looks great, lad. Well done. Phil gave Jack a friendly slap before admiring the place. Hey, couldn't have done it without you guys. Thank you. And Jean and Marie smiled at them, and then left the room. Maggie laughed away happily to herself while I was playing with the rag doll. Rose smiled and scooped her up in her arms. Her big blue eyes met his and she tilted her head slightly, resting his fa on her, her, his father's shoulder and closed his eyes. She's tired, bless little soul, Phil indicated to Maggie. With her big adventures every day, we're all tired, Phil laughed, knowing how much of a handful babies were at this age. It's amazing through that she's here, and she's my little girl. She always will be. Jack stroked his daughter's soft ways before turning to Phil. I just wish I could give Rose something amazing, you know? Just something big to prove how much she means to me. I wish I could give her a better life. I know she's happy here, but she hasn't been happy since back in April when she was in Santa Monica. Her face, Phil. Phil bowed his head lightly, and he knew Rose's dreams to live in Santa Monica. She had ranted for days of how beautiful it was there. I just wish I could make her dream come true again, but... Jack laid Maggie down on her cot and covered her with blankets before tenderly kissing her head. She was fast asleep, and Jack smiled at his sleeping angel and sat on the sofa before turning back to Phil. I know I can't ask for everything. I have so much as it is. A good job, amazing friends, a beautiful wife and daughter. Yes, I understand you, Jackie, but sometimes you can't have everything. I know, Jack said, bowed his head. 
it has been a good day anyway. Rose was due home any time now, and he couldn't wait to start celebrations to ha stop himself from feeling down. But if you can have everything, Phil hesitated. I can? How? I barely have enough money to pay bills or support my family, and we put so much a week for Maggie when she's older, and have to give her a good start if she goes to college or something. My wife works too. I would never ask that of her, but she knows that money is how money is tight, Phil. Jack felt his head throb. He didn't want Rose to work, and even through that he knew it was her choice, and he knew how stubborn she was. He knew that she wouldn't want to change her mind, and he didn't want the idea of her to do anything. But Rose had always hesitated where her hands were made for work. No, you can have her give her everything. Take her there. Take her back there. Sell the house. Pick your jobs in. Pack a suitcase and get out of here. Phil gestured to the door. His voice raised. His breath was short and Jack frowned. Knowing how stupid of the idea was what Phil said was even thinking, for raising the thought of them leaving New York. Jack knew that he wanted to take Rose to Santa Monica to live, but right now the dream seems to be far away, and with the baby things are hard and money is tighter than ever. They have both planned to have more children in the near future, but they couldn't afford to move away or travel if they had more children. I can't do that. Just leave right now? Maggie's still just a baby. Who knows if I'll find work in Santa Monica or if we find loggings. If I sold the house, it still wouldn't be enough money, Phil. It's just not possible. Not right now. If ever. Jack sighed heavily, then looked at the clock. It was 4.15. Rose was due at home any time now. He sighed heavily for out a moment. Was he just giving her false dreams about Santa Monica? Jack stood beside Phil and smiled obviously fakely and held out his hand. Thank you for the help and thank you for your daughters. Come back around seven and we should be done by then. Phil took his hand and shook it. He turned away and fought for a few moments and then turned back. He had a plan. Jack, I have a business proposition for you. Jack frowned. He was confused. A business propose position? Of what sort? What could he possibly want with him? What sort of pro pay, pro bi, pro um, well, what sort of pro bit, pro thing or whatever it is? Jack sounded a little bit more intrigued than he was willing to let on, and Phil smiled knowingly. My brother Zach has a business down in California. He asked me many years ago to join him there. It's a furniture store. I would make people would buy. I would pocket some from the profits. He asked me to be the business partner. I turned him down. I was thinking some months ago about taking up his offer and after becoming his business partner. The money is good and the weather is better if you accept. You could work alongside me. The money would be twice as much more as I'm paying you. He's quite a wealthy man, Jack. What do you say? Jack was stunned. So stunned that his head twirled and he had to sit down as he thought he'd pass out. That was a lot of information to take in. But Jack started not knowing what to do, say, or next. But of course, I know it's sudden, and I mean, moving into Los Angeles isn't Santa Monica, but it's so much closer to dreams, Jackie. Rose would love it there too, waking up to the ocean. Maybe she could even try to pursue her dreams as an actress or a dancer. Jack smiled slightly. This was a wonderful idea. It would certainly give Maggie a better life, but would Rose want this? She Could she give it up all in New York for Los Angeles if it wasn't for her dream? Even if it was close? I'll think about it, Phil. But please, before I do, please telegram your brother. Ask if it'd be alright to join, his, join you in this business. I have no idea about business deals or anything, Phil. I am a country boy, boy through and through, and I grew up on the farm. The only business I know is milking cows. Phil laughed at his humor. Jack, I am clueless as you, lad, but we'll learn. I want a better life. I want to make a Betty proud. She always would moan that I would never took risks. Well, here I am. I'm about to take one. Will you take it with me, Jack? Jack nodded slowly and began to laugh. Wow, this day had really turned out better than he thought. Phil hugged him tightly before leading him to the door.
Talk it over with you, with Rose and Jack. I will tell Grim Zack as soon as possible. Jack nodded and then closed the door as Phil went home. A smile crept on Jack's face as he could not, not comprehend all this. He would never be a very wealthy man. He knew that, but he earned just a bit enough just to set it up. Life in Santa Monica. For his rose, he'd do it. He'd walk over hot to cold just to see his wife smile. At that moment, the door opened and Rose entered. Jack immediately stood there and went to greet her. He noticed that she wasn't wearing the same dress that she's worn and has always gone out that morning. She was dressed in red sequined gown, in which it looked rather expensive. Her hair was down and curly, with her eyes that were shown of happiness. She greeted him with a small kiss on his lips, and then hugged him tightly. Hey, wow, you look stunning, he said, almost at loss for words. He forgot just how amazing she looked when she wore one of those sort of gowns. He was puzzled to why. Thanks, Rose said a smile a little shy shyly. Do you like it? Guess who I bumped into while I was in town today? Samantha. Jack stood in shock and he his head confused. Samantha? Who was she? Oh, Sam was my best friend when I was a little girl. We grew up and moved to she moved to Arizona in 1906. She couldn't believe that I was a mother. Rose smiled happily and gasped as she turned and saw the decorations. A long table set up with a large cake in the middle, a banner which Phil had painted, with a lovely smell of pie that came from the oven. Rose turned and ran to her husband and threw her arms around his neck. You did all this? Rose asked in amazement. She never expected this. Yes, Jack announced proudly. He took his wife's hand and led her to a chair, where he set her down just before tending to the food from the oven and began to plate it up. It smelled delicious. Oh, Jack, I never expected this. I just bought a, a, a small get-together. Well, that's to come later, but for now it's just you and me and, well, Maggie. He, he indicated to the crib where their daughter slept soundly. She's been a little terror all day, off on her adventures again. She's, so, she's been a sock on for a pa past hour, Rose stood from the chair and peered over to the daughter crib and smiled contently. Just seeing her daughter's pretty sleeping face was just enough to make her heart melt. Her tiny fingers clutched onto the end of the blanket, which covered her. Her lips were slightly painted over her chest, planted, but of course, hers with Rose and it fell as she breathed gently. Rose quietly bent over and kissed her daughter's warm forehead before turning her attention back to Jack and the romance evening that they would have. After dinner, Jack thought of mentioning the Santa Monica idea until Rose became wrapped up in telling stories of her and Samantha when they, from when they were children. Samantha Greenwood was a town, town on business. Her husband was the owner of a few hotels worldwide, and she was there to open yet another one in New York. Sam had invited Rose to the grand opening, which would take place the next day, but Rose had politely declined, fearing that she would bump into someone who ran in the same circles as her mother's or her ex fiance Caldon Hockley. Samantha had just brought Rose the dress as a birthday present. Rose knew that it would be probably be the most expensive dress she's ever worn on her own. Maggie gurgled and stirred in her crib in the corner of the room. Rose had begun to lower her voice as just a whisper, not wanting to wake her sleeping daughter. So, what's going to happen later? Rose inquired, a curious look on his face. You'll see, Jack grinned, and rose from his chair. He knew that instead that when he got up was up to something. From the look on his face, it sounded like of his voice. She was intrigued, but liked the surprises. Jack left the room for a moment before returning with the lever file. Rose frowned, and she recognized the file of some sort of sketchbook, similar to the one that, that had been lost on the Titanic. Jack then sat down on his chair and nervously eyed Rose. He was wondering what her reaction would be. Unbill no to her, the past few months, Jack's talent has slowly returned to him. After screwing up a piece of paper one by one after the other because it seemed to be an inspiration had just dried up, at one point he would just see something that inspired him and would put it on a paper. If it wasn't for this inspiration ran dry, Rose had always been always be his inspiration for the past months i have been working i've been sketching i don't know what it was but i just had this inspiration hits me again you know i kept a collection 
and I just wanted to show you, you. Rose felt a small tear threatening to fall from her eye as she touched Jack's cheek affectionately. It's nothing much. I just thought you liked them. Jack was in moodus about the quality of sketches. He felt that this wasn't his best work, but it was a start. Rose shakily picked up the lever portfolio. The touch of the smell were so familiar. The images came rushing back to her on the day of the Titanic, when she had snatched his sketchbook from his hands. Rose looked up at Jack for a moment, looking at an indication of his permission to look inside. Jack nodded and Rose proceeded to open the page to find the first sketch. She gasped in amazement. It was herself and Maggie sleeping. Maggie had been just a few hours old from when she had fallen asleep in her mother's arms. It was that moment that Jack had the inspiration to draw. He had never felt such pride as that day. His family had been complete. Rose gently ran her fingertips over the sketch, and it was almost real. Jack, oh, I... Wait here just a few more. Rose proceeded to turn off the pages to find it was Phil and his family had agreed to pose for the picture, knowing how much it meant to Jack, and they all wanted to see the talent for himself, and they weren't di wasn't disappointed. The third was of himself and Rose on their wedding day, back in December of 1912. Rose felt her breath became more caught in the throat. It was truly amazing. Every single last detail had been drawn, from her hair to her large bump to the, the beading on her dress. They couldn't afford to have a higher photographer for their wedding day, so this was a perfect gift to Rose. Something to remember their special day by. Hey, I was thinking maybe we could frame this one, Jack asked, somewhat hesitantly. He knew it wasn't his best work. Yes, Rose smiled through the tears. I love them. Wow, thank you. Rose was speechless and overwhelmed. She had no idea that he planned this. The final sketch was Rose on a horse in Santa Monica, riding in the surf with her hair blowing freely in the soft breeze and a beautiful smile upon her face, gazing at the sketch. Rose had became lost in it. She could almost feel the gentle breeze on her face. Jack, I had no idea you would do this. It's nothing. I know it's not my best work, but... Not your best work? Jack, this is pretty amazing. Leaning forth, Jack gently kid touched Rose's face. She closed her eyes and felt his soft fingertips glide around her cheeks. He ran his fingers through her over her lips and then kissed them gently before smiling. It means a lot that you like them. It gives me the confidence and inspiration to draw more. It was once my life to sketch, but now I have to work to support my family, and we have a baby. I just don't have that much time anymore. Jack, you mustn't give up your dream. What you love doing most in the world, drawing is your escape? Me? Well, I... Well, I love to dance and, or act to lose myself in another character. It's something I've always wanted to do ever since I was a little girl. Jack suddenly went quiet and realized that there was more things he didn't know about Rose. Every inch of her never failed to amaze him. Don't give up on your dreams, Rose. Ever. I won't, Jack. You encouraged me to follow my dreams. You made my dream a reality. Jack then stood from his chair and summoned Rose to stand too. She did and pulled his body close to hers in a tight embrace. Rose closed her eyes and savoring the moment. This was her heaven. You are my dream, Rose. Upon hearing him speak, Rose felt a small tear roll down her cheek. She felt Jack's gentle fingers wipe it away. He leaned forth and gently kissed her lips once more, then again and more deeply. A loud knock was in at the door, immediately distracted them. Maggie's gently whimper came from their crib. Jack smiled, knowing it was Phil who had came to join in the celebrations. While Rose tended to Maggie, who had been startled by the knock, by 11.30 p.m., the celebrations were over. Everyone except Jack was a little merry. Phil and his family tumbled home was that Jack had fed and whined Maggie before she fell asleep in her father's safe arms. She was exhausted after the life of the soul of the party. She was crawling around wildly now and had to keep have been kept an eye on her at all times. She points things that she's curious about and giggles hysterically when... And Phil tickles her tiny feet. 
Jack watched as his daughter's little chest rose and fell, which steadily her breathing. Her, he tenderly stroked her tiny, rigged lips before her laying her on the cot and tucked her in gently. She stirred slightly as he kissed her forehead and then she went back to sleep. Rose had undressed and taken a warm bath, but she felt more relaxed than she had in a while. Reflecting on the day, Rose had smi smiled. It had been the most wonderful day, meeting her old friend, Jack's surprise, and the party. Phil had taught her how to play poker over a few glasses of, of sherry and had become quite good. She had overjoyed her dinner with Jack, and of course they had danced the night away. And Rose had never felt more free or at ease. Rose fought of her mother sometimes, and she felt guilty for leaving her penniless, but Ruth Duet Bocataker was there a selfish woman and would have to learn the hard way just like Rose had done. Ruth didn't even know she was still alive, that she was married to the man that she most certainly didn't approve of, and had a gorgeous baby granddaughter. Interrupting Rose from her thoughts, she saw Jack appear in the doorway of their bedroom, dressed in his, in his, just in his trousers, and then looked more handsome than ever in the dim light filled the room and the small bedside lamp. Jack's surprise had been so amazing, she was so proud of him and his work. She felt incredible at the pile of amount of pride. She could hardly believe it that she was just 19 years of age and she had lived through much so little time. The days before she had met Jack seemed not so long ago as if they never existed. Rose missed nothing of her previous life, not even the money. Yes, things were tight at the moment, but money doesn't rule the world. It doesn't buy love or freedom or happiness. She knew that. I have some news for you, Rose, Jack st started, summoning Rose to sit beside him on the bed. Quickly, she found her nightmares, the nightdress and dressed herself in it before sitting beside her husband. She took her hand and he kissed it gently. He thought of just how to say the words he was just about to say. He couldn't summon up the courage. I love you, all right? I want the best for all of us. Rose nodded, having a weird feeling about what Jack was going to say. I know you for a long time a better life than this, Rose. So do I. I want to make the best of all your dreams come true. And for Maggie to grow into a happy little girl, I know that New York isn't the home for you. But it is, Jack. We have a nice life there. And it, is, it isn't everything, but it's something. Jack sighed heavily. He could feel his heart beating faster. He was scared of her reaction about that job that he had been offered in L.A. And he wanted to take the opportunity to get her away from here. To find a new, better life. Rose and Phil's brother, Zach, had offered me a job in Los Angeles. It's pretty much like the same job. It's just better pay. And Phil would be coming too as a joint manager. If I take the job, it would be me moving into Los Angeles. Rose slowly released herself from Jack's hand as she stood, almost feeling sick and dizzy. She ran a hand over her forehead before circling the room. What and um, when? Rose asked. The words were tumbling from her mouth. I know it's all of a sudden, but it's a better life, Rose, for all of us. That's what I want. Rose nodded as Jack's eyes met hers. If you don't want this, we don't go. But I put your happiness before mine, Rose. Just think about it. The weather is out there, beautiful. The money is good for the job. Phil will be there. You won't have to work. I'll make new friends. Maggie can grow up next to the beach. Maybe you could even try your hand at acting. Rose smiled slightly. It sounded amazing, but how on earth would they even do it? Money was tight. Megan was just a baby. Things were just hard as enough as it is. It's no Santa Monica, Rose, but it were closer. It was a lot of information to take in. They had barely enough money to scrape by their own. How on earth would they manage to move houses? How will we do it, Jack? With what money? Rose sat down on the bed, and she sighed heavily, feeling the dreams almost been snatched away from her. We will, Rose. We could sell the house and use that money. We'll earn it back anyway. I will be working less hours for more money. Zach even owns a big business out there. It's a furniture department, and I'll be making the furniture, just like I have done here. Rose nodded, drinking all the information that she ever wanted. It sounds amazing, 
but she had just settled here. New York did feel like a home. More home than anywhere else except Santa Monica. But maybe she would just settle there. Then Maggie was older, she could, could play at the beach with friends. But here in New York, there was pollution and businesses all day long. Rose fought of it for a while longer before she came to a conclusion. All right, Jack. Rose nodded her head slightly. What? Jack asked. We'll do it. We'll move. It's a great opportunity. I doubt we'll ever come across again. Jack smiled and whooped happily and scooped Rose up in his arms. She giggled hysterically, suddenly happy with their new decision.